for medical research. It is an issue that has become so heated, some people will use virtually any means to protect and save animals. We are live tonight at the University of San Diego at the University Center town hall meeting to explore the controversial issue of the use of animals in research. Nearly 400 people have joined us tonight along with a panel of experts on the subject, and you at home will have a chance to call in your questions right here on Third Thursday. Marty Levine, let me start uh, right off the bat and introduce our panel members to you. Those of you who are at home will be giving you the phone number in a few minutes so that you can also phone in your questions tonight. First, Dr. Roger Breslau, San Diego Director for the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. Next to Dr. Breslau is Sally Mackler, the Director of San Diego Animal Advocates. Next is Cleveland Amory, who is the founder and the president of the Fund for Animals. Dr. Stuart Zola Morgan is the chairman of uh, the Animal Research Committee at the University of California at San Diego. Steve Carroll is the executive director of the Incurably Ill for Animal Research. And next to Steve is Dr. William Rennard, the president-elect of the San Diego County Medical Society. We'll talk to the panel in a moment. You at home will have an opportunity to phone in your questions as well as members of our audience. We'd like you to meet two people that we hope will help set the tone for the program. The first is Jane Cartmill, if you'd be kind enough to stand up. You worked in the medical field, but now you are uh, opposed to any use of animals in medical research? That's right, I am, because I know the difference between animal research and medical progress. They're not the same thing. Uh, I work with patients every day and my mother has cancer, my brother has diabetes, and I'd like to see medical progress help them, but I know that laboratory animal experiments do not translate into health care. For example, at UCSD, there's a $200,000 grant to study to drain blood from the fetuses of pregnant sheep, while in San Diego we have a critical lack of prenatal care for pregnant women. Okay. You're talking now about priorities, where we spend the money, because obviously the doctor's going to argue that there's some value in that. Let me ask you one more question. Has there been in the past uh, any information that has come from animal research that has helped? Because you mentioned diabetes. One of the cases often cited by the researchers in the medical profession is that without animal research, we would not have perfected the insulin treatment to the degree that we have. Fully 90% of diabetes, according to the American Diabetes Association, is preventable. And I think it is a travesty that we're not allocating our funds away from animal experiments and into programs of prevention. Okay. But if all animal research stopped today, you are confident that medical progress would be made at the same pace as if animals were to continue to be used? Absolutely. Okay. Just, just because animals have been used in the past does not mean that that's the best way to accomplish things. It's not the only way. And certainly that kind of thinking would have kept us in the dark ages. Okay, thank you. Let me uh, introduce you now to uh, Steve Gardella. We have, as usual, a, a, a divided audience. Uh, you work in research. You work at UCSD. And what is your story? My story is that when my daughter was one years old, she contracted spinal meningitis. And uh, she was nearly dead in my arms when I had brought her to the hospital. Uh, once she was diagnosed and they were able to uh, prescribe the proper drugs, and those drugs that they prescribed were developed and tested on animals. Um, I mean, you feel that without that testing, without the animals, you would have lost your daughter? Exactly. If it wasn't for those animals saved my daughter's life, the drugs that were tested and developed by using animals in research. And are you comfortable that, that the work that you are doing now, that the experiments of which you are a part, are contributing to medical progress, or would you agree with Ms. Cartmill that we could stop it all now and we would not lose anything in, this, in the forward movement of medicine? I disagree with her 100%. I am fully confident of what we're doing is for the betterment of mankind. Okay, Steve, thank you very much. Uh, well, you have a sense now of what the issue is. Uh, the controversy over the use of animals in research is uh, one of extreme interest locally. I should say that we are at the University of San Diego because there is a minimal amount of research done here. But there is a good deal of animal research that is done in San Diego and La Jolla and numerous research facilities. First, uh, before we talk to the panel, a background report on animal rights versus medical research. 
A delicate open heart surgery procedure is being performed here at the Veterans Administration Hospital in La Jolla. What is unusual is that the patient is a pig. We have to have a heart that's physically large enough that we can make all the measurements we need, get all the instruments in. It's also the least socially valuable animal. We use dogs as little as possible um, because we don't like to use dogs in our experiments. Dr. Robert Engler is a UCSD cardiologist. He has worked on animals for more than a decade researching heart disease. Engler says white blood cells actually cause damage during a heart attack. He is trying through this research to find a way to minimize or eliminate that damage. There's no other way to find out this information, no. If we could do it with a computer model, we would, but you can't. No one's had any measurements, so we have no data to put into the computer. The researchers are lying! The animals are dying! For staunch animal rights activists, this is an issue with virtually no middle ground. They want to see the outright ban of animals in biomedical research. That stand has led to many recent protests throughout the nation, including rallies here in San Diego and on the steps of the state capitol just last month. Cowardice is vivisectors hiding behind locked doors in their basement fortresses. But courage is anti-vivisectionists who risk jail to break into the laboratories to rescue helpless, traumatized animals. Well, the volume has increased recently, the issue of animal rights is not new. Humane societies were founded in the late 19th, early 20th centuries, in part to look out for the welfare of laboratory animals, also in part because research had greatly increased. Donald Barnes is a former medical researcher who now heads the National Anti-Vivisection Society. So we are asking for an attitude change. We're asking for people not to say, well, it's no big deal. They're just mice and rats. We're asking for people to say there's pain and suffering there because that's the real question. There's pain and suffering and death. Do we have the right to inflict that on other beings? Don't think so. While Barnes is working through the system to bring about change, others have resorted to far more extreme measures. The principal example is the Animal Liberation Front, which has illegally freed many animals from medical facilities. The new push for animal rights has created a counter-effort by people who benefit most directly, the victims of incurable disease. The fact that they developed insulin using you know, dogs from the pound has saved my life. I wouldn't be here talking to you today after four years of having this if I hadn't been taking insulin every day. Sharon Harlow is a diabetic who heads the local chapter of the incurably ill for animal research. She and others have been speaking out in recent months about their strong feelings for animal research. The vaccine could be considered 80 to 90 percent effective against paralytic poliomyelitis. The polio vaccine developed in 1955 by Dr. Jonas Salk was also the result of research on animals. It put an end to the dread disease that had been killing 30,000 people a year. A total of 57 Nobel Prizes for Physiology and Medicine have been awarded for research done since 1901 with animals. <laughs> Nevertheless, despite many medical advances through the use of animals, opponents maintain there are far better, newer ways of conducting research. All in all, it remains a very emotional issue. I think it's up to mankind to stand up and speak on behalf of these creatures who are innocent and have done no wrong, yet we're doing horrible wrong to them. Uh, this is Dr. Angler, whose uh, lab we visited in the beginning of that, of that story. Um, are you guessing, I don't, don't want to go too far into detail on the research because it gets a little bit obscure. Are you guessing that white blood cells cause problems during heart attacks? Or that's something you already know? We started with uh, test tube experiments and computer models, and that predicted that they would. But to be certain, we had to do some experiments in the model to get real data to confirm the computer models. And now we have that data. Okay. And, and if everything works out, if you are able to do what you hope to be able to do, which is inhibit the white blood cells, what is apt to be the result? Well, we already have the first of, I hope, many drugs that will be very useful in heart attack to do that in clinical trials in man. Okay. Now, you, would you object to using another system? Would you object to a computer model if you could do it? You're maintaining you can't do it, right? We use those as much as we can. It's most efficient. We can make more progress faster if we can use computer models and test tube experiments. We go to physiology experiments in animals when we have to have that kind of data to be sure it's safe to take something into man. Okay.